how are you all today? I just wanted to walk through the introduction chapter to Nazi Germany. So this is Nazi Germany 1933 to 39, uh, and it's on page 338 if you're using timeline. It's an introduction to Adolf Hitler. So Hitler is a big figure in history, I'm sure you've all heard him before. A uh, very controversial figure, um, very important figure in European history. Uh, we're going to kind of just ease into him today. I'll walk through the chapter and then you can do some of the exercises that I, that I send you on Edmodo. To understand kind of Adolf Hitler and how did he get the power, like how did he even come about, you have to understand that after World War I, Germany was broke, completely broken, okay? It was this kind of in-between country called the Weimar Republic, and that word's very important, Weimar Republic. And basically, all these German politicians met in the town of Weimar to draw up a new constitution. And they accepted the Treaty of Versailles. They accepted all this thing about, you know, Germany's not allowed to have a big army, not allowed to have more than 100,000 men. And Germany's, Germans hated it. So German people really didn't like it. Very high unemployment, very poor government. They didn't really run things properly. It was a bit of a mess of a country. People in Germany were very angry with it. And the big thing about it was that it was weak. So it was a weak government where every kind of year there was new elections. They didn't really know who was in charge. The elections were disputed once or twice. Um, and they ran the country pretty poorly. Um, they had to pay reparations to France, to America, to Britain. So it didn't have any money, basically. Uh, the politicians then in charge, they were blamed for accepting the harsh terms of the Treaty of Versailles. They were blamed for everyone's kind of life. They were blamed for the high unemployment. Um, and people came to the conclusion in Germany that democracy had kind of failed them, that it wasn't running well um, and the democracy was weak and it wasn't able to deliver for people's lives. And to some extent, in the Weimar Republic, they, they were right because there was such high unemployment um, and people came to this conclusion that the system that they had at the, the moment wasn't working. And they had to look kind of for a new system of government. And in 1929, something else hit. So in 1929, uh, it was the Wall Street crash. Okay, so the stock market in America completely went you know, down the drain. Americans stopped lending money to countries. The unemployment rose rapidly from 1 million in 1929 to 6 million in 19. 32. So it's a massive increase in unemployment. The Weimar Republic was unable to cope. Uh, more people blamed the government, the, the politicians, that they were weak. Most people were pretty poor, were very, very poor. Um, and this kind of created an atmosphere where people were looking for new alternatives, like how could they get their country to be better. They were looking for getting new systems and new ideas. And this guy, Adolf Hitler, comes along. Okay, so Adolf Hitler, he's born in Austria in 1889. Okay, so Austria is like a country south of Germany. He's born in Austria, 1889. He grew up in Vienna, where there was a high Jewish population, and he kind of grew up to start to hate the Jewish people around him. That's going to be important later. Um, and he was an artist. So in his early life, he was actually an artist, if you could believe that. Um, in 1913, he had to join the German military, and he fought in World War One. So he fought quite bravely. In World War One, he won an Iron Cross for from bravery, um. But he thought that the German leadership in the army was weak, and he hated the politicians who signed the Treaty of Versailles. So he kind of came back as kind of a bit of a war hero, and he was very vocal, very against the kind of current politicians in Germany. So after World War One, he joined a group called the German Workers Party. He was a really good public speaker, so he could throw his hands around, really get crowds riled up. And eventually he became the leader. So he renamed this party the National Socialist German Workers Party. So that got shortened eventually to the Nazi Party. Um, and that's where the word Nazi comes from. The National Socialist German Workers Party shortened, came to the Nazi Party. So he kind of created this new political party, a new political group called the Nazi Party. And they were looking around Europe and they looked at Mussolini in Italy and they said, look, that's a good example to follow. They took a lot of Mussolini's ideas. So this new Nazi party took ideas from Mussolini's fascist party. Hitler became known as the Führer, so the leader, in the same way that Mussolini was called 
Il Giuse, it's the same kind of thing where they called the leader, the Fuhrer. And everyone had to give him a right arm salute. He held big marches and rallies where he gave big dramatic speeches and basically made a lot of promises. He said he was going to make Germany great again. He was going to kind of build a new empire for Germany. Um, he surrounded himself by his followers. And his followers were brown shirts. Um, they were called the SA. So that's German for Sturm Abel Tongue, which kind of roughly translates to stormtroopers in English. And they were brown shirts um, and they were called the SA. He had then another kind of elite team that were surrounded by him and they were kind of his bodyguards and they wore black uniforms and they were called the SS. So in German, that's the Skultustaffel. German's not good. Skultustaffel. Um, and they were like the, his kind of most trusted people that he surrounded himself with. So what kind of policies did he have at the start? He was extremely nationalist, okay? So he believed that Germany was the best country and that they were superior to everyone around them and you know they were the best of the best and he genuinely believed that and he kind of made other people believe it he said germans were their superior race and the superior country in europe and they needed to be you know taken of what was theirs he strongly opposed the treaty of versailles um, and everyone liked this so everyone in germany really didn't like the treaty of versailles and he you know started to appeal to a lot of people when he said he's going to rip up this treaty of versailles uh, and can form new treaties. So he became quite popular with this. He was extremely anti-communist. So we saw the kind of communist revolution in Russia. He was against that. Okay, he was really anti-communist. Um, and you know, businessmen, the rich people, they liked this. Okay, they were scared of communism. Um, so businessmen started to kind of pay his party money. Um, and in return, the SA and SS started to attack communists in the street. They went to meetings and attacked them. And you had this kind of like street battles between the Nazis and communists. And another thing, he made big promises. So he said he was going to revive the economy, solve unemployment problems and create a new empire. So the German word for empire is Reich. So he said he was going to make a third Reich and it's going to last for a thousand years. Like an empire that lasts for a thousand years. So German people, a lot of them like this kind of talk and they started to believe him. So another kind of way to get the um, power, and this is really important, is through propaganda. So propaganda is when um, a person or a group try basically to brainwash a population and to believe in a certain point of view. So he's an outstanding public speaker. He used very simple slogans. The Nazis had these like basically offices where they created thousands of posters, newspaper articles, cartoons, films, pictures, books. And all this kind of media was shared around the newspapers, they put posters on walls. Um, and this media, was the, the, their, their propaganda, it always blamed the Treaty of Versailles. They always blamed Jewish people and they blamed communists. For every kind of problem in Germany, they were always attacking the Treaty of Versailles. Jewish people and communists. This is the kind of people they attacked. Um, and I've got a video here that I'm going to upload. And it's basically of like examples of Nazi propaganda. So every poster, speech, newspaper, article, cartoon, film, picture made by the Nazis blamed Jews, communists and the Treaty of Versailles for, for every problem that they kind of face in Germany. Another reason Hitler rose to power was that the SA and the SS became quite powerful. So the SA were the brown shirts. They were led by Ernst Röhm. There was about 400,000 of them by 1932. So a huge kind of force. These are just guys in the street in brown shirts who, you know, attack you know, any opposition to Hitler. If you said things bad about Hitler, they'd come after you. The SS, then the black, they kind of like wore black shirts. And they were led by Heinrich Himmler. And they acted the bodyguards to Hitler. They kind of went where he went. And they were more extreme than the SA. So the SS were more extreme than the SA, but they were all supporters of Hitler. They wore uniforms, they had the right arm salute, um, swastikas, um, we're gonna see that symbol on the PowerPoint. Big mass rallies, and this gave the impression of a lot of action, a lot of strength. Um, and people kind of got, you know, bought in by the whole kind of show. He's a big performer, Hitler, and people really kind of enjoyed his rallies. Um, and they joined up and signed uh, their name up to join his party. 
they attacked communists, socialists, and they intimidated their opposition. So they went against the opposition. In return for attacking the communists, as I said, businessmen supported them. So the SA and the SS became quite powerful groups. They went into, if say a newspaper published something against Hitler, they'd go to the office of the newspaper and they'd burn it down. Or they'd attack the people who wrote the, the stuff about Hitler. So, in 1923, Germany was close to an economic collapse. So, one in five people didn't have a job. Horrendous unemployment. And they could no longer pay reparations to France. So, they couldn't pay France the money that... Remember the 6.6 .6 billion in the Treaty of Versailles? They couldn't pay that to France anymore. So, France, kind of just to try to get the money from Germany, basically sent troops to a part of Germany. So they sent their army just to occupy, just for a short while, a part of Germany. Germans were furious. Germany really angry about this. They were really down on their knees, really in a bad way. So Hitler and his supporters thought this is a good moment. This is a good time to you know try and take everything over by force. So they weren't going to bother with elections. They were going to take things over by force. So in Munich there was a beer hall, uh, and they tried to take it over. So they started off in a beer hall. They tried to take over the city of Munich. Uh, it didn't work out. We won't go into it, but it, it was crazy. Called the Beer Hall Push at Pusk, uh, and it failed. Uh, Germany, uh, you know, German people kind of didn't like this whole thing of him trying to take over something by force. The police uh, came in. They arrested Hitler. So Hitler was arrested, and he actually spent five years in prison. So Hitler was sentenced to five years in prison for this kind of failed uprising. Um, and in prison, he wrote a book, and this book is called Mein Kampf in German and in English it translates to my struggle and it was a book and it basically explained his views so this book is actually illegal to have most places in Europe in Ireland and in the UK it's not illegal to have but um, it's still illegal today in, in a lot of places in Europe and it basically says you know how he blames Jewish people communists the Treaty of Versailles for kind of making Germany a weak country and he kind of came up with this plan he said he was going to make Germany this great country again and he had it in a book, and this book sold pretty well. Um, uh, it was The whole thing was he wanted to create this new German empire. So after he was released from prison, he was in some ways more popular than before because people kind of knew about him then. He got more uh, popular, more publicised. And in 1928, he was in an election. And basically, in this first election, his party only won 12 seats, which wasn't a lot. But by 1932... He went up to 242 seats. So he actually won an election. So this is important because Nazis, they were they actually won. They were voted in. They, were, they won their election. Uh, and the Nazi party became the largest political group in Germany. Um, the president Hindenburg, kinda, he was the president of Germany at the time. And he was scared of Hitler. He, was, he didn't want Hitler to come to power. Um, but he saw, look, we maybe we can give Hitler a little power and his views will be a bit like diluted and he won't be as extreme as he, he tries to be. And he appoint, appoints Hitler to be the Chancellor in January 1933. Big mistake. So Hitler then, he's in a position of power, he's the Chancellor in Germany, which is a quite important role. And from then on, he sets out, sets out establishing a dictatorship Kind of taken away the parliament and um, taken away kind of democracy and him and his party then control everything so there's a youtube video of a documentary that you can watch that kind of explains that as well um so there's seven different reasons hitler rose to power there test yourself you know close the book see how many you can remember from just watching this video from just reading the chapter and um, so we've got the weakness of the weimar republic the, the Great Depression, we've got Hitler's re re leadership of the Nazis, Hitler's policies, his use of propaganda, the SA and the SS, and then how he was the largest party. So we've got seven reasons there. You know, turn this off, close your book, and try and list off the seven reasons yourself, write about them, because they're important. They come up in the junior cert a lot of the time. Sometimes, usually there's a, there's a account question, there's like write an account of Hitler's rise to power. That's a very common question. So know it inside out. There's a few videos here that I'm going to show you then as well. Okay, So you can write an account of how Hitler rose to power. One and a half, eight, four pages. That's going to be the game here that you know what you're doing. Okay.
So hope you're all safe, uh, keeping safe and well. See you.